Hey friend, in this video, I am teaching you the principles to painting watercolor flowers. So if you're painting some watercolor flowers, maybe you've hopped on my channel, you've watched a few of my tutorials for watercolor flowers, like our peony video, our rose video, whatever, but you're still struggling with the way your flowers are turning out and you're just really not happy with them, or you're still struggling with certain flowers. In this video, I'm gonna share with you the five principles to watercolor flowers, that if you focus on these five principles, it's gonna transform the way your flowers come out when you're painting them. And then at the end, I also share a bonus tip, so make sure you stick and watch till the end. So if you're ready, let's dive in. All right, so the first principle to painting watercolor flowers is shape. So before you even pick up your paintbrush and start painting, you wanna think about the flowers that you're creating and the style or the shape of that flower. So for example, there are bell flowers, there are cone-shaped flowers, there are star-shaped flowers, there are fan-shaped flowers. So whatever you're trying to create, if it's, for example, if it's an anemone and you're looking at it face down with the whole flower open, that's a star-shaped flower. We have maybe five, six, whatever type of flowers, but they're all in points versus something that's a bell-shaped flower like foxgloves or morning glory, where they have this long body kind of tube that fans out and it looks just like a bell. Um, so you wanna think about the overall shape of the flower. There's some great resources online that really go into sketching these shapes of flowers. I also have tons and tons of sketching tips and shape references in my book, Everyday Watercolor Flowers, if you wanna dive even deeper into this. But every flower has an overall basic shape. And whether you're sketching or you're painting that flower, you wanna emulate that shape with your petals and with your details and the rest of the principles that I'm gonna share, which leads me into my next tip or principle, which is anchor point. So if you are painting a star-shaped flower, let's say you're gonna have your anchor point and you're looking straight onto that flower at the middle of the flower, the stamen area, your anchor point is going to be that central point where that stamen is. You wanna make sure that all of your petals are pointed back to that anchor point. So for example, if you're painting a star-shaped flower like an anemone and you have one petal that is pointing towards the center here, but maybe your other petal is kind of pointing towards a different type of anchor point and they wouldn't be pointing back to the same spot, every single petal has gotta be pointing back to that same spot where that stem connects. So that is that anchor point. So even for a bell-shaped flower, if your stem is over here and you have a petal pointing this way, that's not gonna make any sense. And a lot of beginners, you'll notice right away that they're maybe new to painting flowers because of the anchor point is kind of all over the place or they're not having their petals point to the same exact spot on the flower um, for every single petal. So you wanna really pay attention to that anchor point. Where is the stem connecting to the base of my petals? And every single petal should be pointing back to that specific anchor point. Then the next principle is white space. So this is really important, especially for loose style florals. So think about roses. If you're painting a rose, which is a circular shape, if we're going back to the first principle, but if we're painting a rose, a loose style rose, and a lot of people when they are painting roses for the first time, or they're not really developed in this area quite yet, they kind of just paint these really thin C curves and circular shapes um, that either create too much white space and it looks like a puffy, fluffy cloud or popcorn, or there's not enough white space and it just looks like a blob of color. So white space is very, very critical in terms of making sure that it's developing the form and the fluffiness or the texture of the actual flower. So for roses, for example, the white space in a rose is actually what's gonna show you the separate layers of petals because roses have tons and tons of petals. Same with peonies, that white space is really going to evoke or show that there's a lot of layers, there's a lot of petals. And if you're painting a tulip, for example, a side facing tulip, and you have um, a few teardrop shaped petals and no white space, it's just gonna kind of look like a fan or a cone. But if there's some white space in there, then it's gonna look like, oh, those are individual petals. So white space is extremely important. Third principle for painting watercolor flowers, um, extremely important to have just enough white space, not too much white space, because we don't want it to look too elementary or too fluffy or too, you know, just little kiddish. And then just a little bit of white space so it doesn't look too look much like a blob. Then the fourth principle for painting watercolor flowers is detail. So adding detail at the right time and in the right place. So for example, with loose style flowers, let's go back to the anemone example. 
It's a star-shaped flower and that center of that flower, that particular flower is black usually. So a black center, purplish black center on a red petal. And then anemones come in a variety of different colors. There's blue anemones, there's pink, there's white, there's red, a bunch of different colors. So let's say we're painting a red anemone and that center of an anemone is a blackish purplish color. Well, if we're adding that detail to the, with the stamen, the bulb of the flower and whatnot too soon, when those petals are still wet, that black is gonna take over and create a blob. But when we're adding in just the right amount of detail, like we did in the Icelandic poppy tutorial, where I added in a fluffy texture for the stamen and it just nodded to the stamen. We weren't painting each individual stamen or pollen area or bulb of the flower. We were kind of just evoking little bits here and there with adding texture with the darker brown and the yellow. That is the perfect amount of detail. It's not gonna overwhelm the huge fluffy petals on this poppy. And I added it at just the right time so it doesn't blend too much. It blends just enough. So adding in detail is a really important piece to painting your watercolor flowers. A lot of times I really like to go in and add white gouache once my watercolor is completely dried. Sometimes I feel like, especially in cherry blossoms, that's the perfect little white opaque punch to adding detail to flowers. Um, and it really can just be some simple dots. It doesn't have to be super extreme or detailed or anything like that, especially with blue style flowers, but having patience, waiting for layers to dry or waiting and just adding little details here and there can make all the difference in your floral paintings. Or maybe it's a little bit more of a realistic painting like in our sunflower tutorial when I went in and added a slightly darker kind of mid-tone shadow value of the yellow petal color underneath for the lines, the veiny texture, the dips and valleys inside the petal of the sunflower. So that little fine detail with your size two brush can make all of the difference and make your flowers really pop. Check out that tutorial because it's a good one. And then the fifth and final principle for watercolor flowers is perspective. So not all of the time will flowers be facing directly at you with the center of that flower pointed straight at you, right? Like you'll see flowers on their side, pointing at a little angle. Um, you'll see the middle of the flower, you'll see the side of the flower, you'll see the top, the bottom. So adding in perspective of flowers is going to be, is what's gonna really create movement if you're painting a floral composition piece, a full floral or a bouquet of flowers um, or a wild field of flowers. You wanna make sure to add in more perspectives of flowers so it's not just the same view on the same type of flower over and over again because that, that can look really flat, really boring. So if you wanna add movement dimension to your floral pieces, make sure you're adding in side facing flowers or top down or a little bit more angled side facing than the other one. So you wanna mix it up, add in some more perspective. So if you need some help with perspective, practicing perspective for flowers, we've got a great parrot tulip uh, tutorial that we'll link right here for you to check out. That goes over some side facing views of parrot tulip, tulips, open, closed, etc., to help you loosen up that muscle for perspective and seeing that with your eye. Um, practicing that is gonna be super helpful for your floral pieces, which leads me to a bonus tip, which is all about composition. So composition is extremely important, especially if you're doing like a full floral piece or a bouquet. We have a greeting card tutorial where I show you a bouquet and how I uh, center and shape the bouquet in an S curve. So when it comes to composition, you wanna think about a few things. So if you're painting a full floral, floral piece that is covering the whole sheet of paper, I like to, because it can be really overwhelming, split my painting up or my sheet of paper up into quadrants. So I have one, two, three, four smaller individual, uh, smaller sized paintings. And within each of those quadrants, I'm painting floral shapes that follow an S curve. So maybe my leaves and my stems are creating that S curve and I'm filling in flowers here and there around that S curve. An S curve is how people's eyes naturally want to flow through viewing a photograph or through, uh, through viewing a painting. You wanna lead people's eyes kind of zigzagging or ping-ponging across the piece because you don't want them to get stagnant and stuck in one spot. So you want them to start higher up over here and then start to get lower and lower and flowing through your entire painting, the entire scene. This is landscapes, florals, doesn't matter what it is, but you wanna kind of have them falling in an S curve. So for your full, bouquet or your full floral pieces, you want to make sure that you're leading people's eyes with moments or shapes of flowers or 
contrasting bits in here and there with an S curve. If you need more help with this composition stuff, because it can be, it's very deep detailed topic and it's um, something that I cover really, really thoroughly in one of our Patreon videos that we did. Uh, a couple of months ago, we did a live art class on floral composition and it was bomb. Otherwise we have tons and tons of free videos on my YouTube channel that cover floral composition in bits and pieces here and there. So make sure to check those out and we'll link to all of those there. Our white flowers tutorial is good. The greeting card one, like I mentioned, so those were the five principles plus a little bonus for painting watercolor flowers. I hope that was helpful for you to summarize. We talked about shape, anchor point, uh, white space, detail, perspective, and composition. If there was something that you think is another principle maybe that I left out or forgot about, uh, those are just the ones that I think are most important. There's obviously so many other tips that I could give you and we give them in other videos. But if you thought there was something foundational that I forgot or you wanted to mention, make sure to drop it in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.